XS Wireless Digital is the perfect wireless audio solution for content creators and filmmakers. Thanks to a 2.4 GHz transmission, XS Wireless Digital is a truly plug and play system that allows you to upgrade your in-camera audio with one button operation. With a variety of configurations to choose from, this entry point into the world of wireless will improve your workflow and will expand the possibilities of how you capture audio for your video. For more information, visit Sennheiser.com slash XSWD. Okay, welcome back to Pro V Live. Sorry about the technical issues there for everyone who is watching this live. If you're watching it pre-recorded, we had a few technical problems there and seemed to have froze, so we had to restart the stream. Um, so for those of you watching this live, real, really apologies for that. Um, we will go over a couple of the intro points just very quickly. Again, we'll go through them a bit quicker this time, um, but I think it's important because if people are gonna be watching this, after the fact, they need to know what's going on. But welcome, the, we are talking to Phil Lane today from Bird Dock. Let me introduce you. How are you doing, Phil? Hi, Carl. Yeah, no, I'm good, thank you. Um, so, I know we've already had this conversation. But <laughs> <laughs> could you give the people watching this back afterwards just a really quick little introduction to who Bird Dog are as a company and the sort of things that you do? Okay, yes. Yeah. So uh, as a very quick overview, so uh, Bird Dog's an Australian company. Um, we started four, uh, four and a half years ago uh, yep. when um, the, the team that founded the company found out about um, NDI um, mm -hmm. as they were the new tech um, uh, distributor for, uh, for the region. Um, they realized very quickly this was a great protocol, but at the time there wasn't a way of taking a baseband uh, video signal from a broadcast camera and actually mm -hmm. getting that into new tech's NDI world to work with the TriCasters. Um, okay. So they set about looking and designing our first product, which was the Studio NDI. And from there, our portfolio of NDI products has grown. So we have hardware, cameras, and software all designed around NDI and the workflow. Okay. So we will um, assume some basic knowledge on NDI um, for this, because obviously um, once you get to the point in NDI where you're starting to do it remotely, there is a few base steps of knowledge that you need, you need to know about NDI before that. Sure. But for those watching who maybe don't know NDI, just to really, really briefly, it, it's actually surprisingly simple. And we will be doing a whole bunch of streams that are going over NDI, both on how we've been using it now here at ProV, but also how um, it can be used in a variety of different situations. So we'll be doing loads more streams on that coming up soon, because I think it's going to be an incredibly relevant technology as we deal now with this global pandemic. And because we'll probably be using it to deal with that, I imagine it will be, it will just accelerate the adoption of IP within the, the video world. Uh, but essentially, NDI is new text technology. It takes video and audio over a LAN connection or an IP network, which is just simple using simple Ethernet or CAT6 cables to wire up just like you would for the internet. But it's not like related to the internet. It just uses the same hardware infrastructure. So that out of the way, Bird Dog Cloud, Phil. Now, this is something yeah. a little bit different, isn't it? This, I've just said that NDI doesn't use the internet. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's prove no. that wrong, shall we? <laughs> well, yes and no. So NDI as a protocol wasn't designed to be uh, to be pushed or moved uh, across a public internet connection. Um, it works mm -hmm. on local area networks. Uh, we can work on VLANs. We can work on different subnets, but we work we can't work across um, the internet. Uh, so we we had to find a way, a solution to be able to take NDI from uh, one location, um, encode it somehow, 
and then be able to move it across the public internet to be then decoded at a, at a receiving endpoint. So, which is which is effectively what cloud does. So, cloud probably is. Um, it's probably not the wrong name, but it probably gives people probably the slightly wrong impression of what cloud does. As cloud doesn't actually sit in the cloud, i.e. we're not pushing the video streams via a, a cloud service. Once we once we sort of create a connection between two endpoints, um, that is a point to point connection over the public internet. The cloud section is, um, is the centralized management um, software that's uh, hosted uh, in the cloud. So if we, uh, when we, once we move through the, uh, the sort of um, presentation, I'll, I'll be able to sort of outline that a little bit more. Sure. Um, so really simply then, um, if you've got a NDI setup, like I have here, for example, um, on one connection, and then you wanted to bring in sources or push it out to a separate location, um, say, for example, where you are right now, we could be using something like Bird Dog Cloud to bring in PTZ cameras that are sitting in your house or to output some output so that you can monitor things, all that sort of stuff. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's jump through some of the slides then. So this is, I think, is a bit of a, okay. this is where we got to before the Yeah, <laughs> this is where we got to before. Crash. So um, the, the ne these next few slides will just sort of give a, a base outline of a sort of a very simple point-to-point -point connection. So um, we have a location one, um, which we have multiple NDI sources, single NDI sources, which could be anything, could be a bird dog camera, could be a converter, it could be an output from a TriCaster, for a, from a vMix, from, from a Wirecast system. We could have any NDI source um, working on that. Um, so it could, it could be a uh, NDI HX, could be a full NDI. Um, it could be anything. Uh, cloud will see that. Um, and then we'll allow that to then be encoded in e to SRT. So SRT um, is an SDK that was produced by a company called HiVision. Um, and people may know them for their Makito series of encoders. So they're sort of straight SRT to SRT encoder systems. So we utilize their technology for encoding and moving um, the NDI video uh, rewrapped as SRT across the public internet. So mm -hmm. SRT stands for Secure Reliable Transport um, and basically gives um, a high quality. Um, it allows us to do multiple channels. It's very low latency. Um, it's highly resilient as well. So we can have anything up to around about 50% packet loss while the video and audio is traveling, um, which, is, okay. which is quite significant. And we'll still get a usable video um, and image at the end. Um, and it allows us to do the uh, point to point um, streaming um, securely as well, as we have three levels of encryption available with SRT. So we can take all of those um, NDI sources from, say, location one, we've got here as San Francisco, and move that to location two, which I believe is Melbourne. Um, mm -hmm. And that will then take the NDI sources uh, from one location and make them available as if they were being generated locally at uh, the other end. So then you could then move that back out into your vMix, into a TriCaster, and then do anything that you want it. So all of that um, is then controlled, um, if we move forward a slide, by the uh, Cloud Management Console. So this is the part that actually sits um, in the cloud. So the cloud management software is hosted on a number of AWS servers uh, globally. So we have servers all over the world that, that host this. So once you go into the management console, that then gives you the ability to manage and access all of your streams um, and the encoding process and uh, decide what you want to send whether you're doing it with cameras, so we want tally um, and PTZ control and, and different mm -hmm. settings within that. So that's, that's the management software. So that's the only bit that really sits in the cloud. And you can group multiple NDI um, sources, inputs and outputs to one endpoint, can you, within cloud? You can indeed. If we move on to the next slide, um, this is one of the beauty uh, um, one of the great things about cloud is that all of these endpoints that we can see that have popped up on the screen now can be accessed and can all link together. So you could link multiple um, studios. Um, so you could have feeds coming in from three studios to one centralized point where the program's being um, 
made and switched and output um, to go live. Uh, so it, it's completely um, manageable in terms of what you can do and what you can send between different endpoints. The only sure. thing you need to have is just the endpoints online and available with NDI sources. Okay. So should we give a couple of real world examples of how this might be useful in the current situation? Um, I mean, one that instantly um, jumps to mind is that say we were, let's use this stream as an example. Now, for, I guess for clarification, we're not using this technology right now. We, we're just using a simple Skype to bring you in as a remote guest to a setup, which I'm doing here. Yeah. But one thing that immediately springs to mind for, for, for this sorts of stream with this, and this is a very basic stream really, isn't it? Um, it is, but yeah. what, what we could be doing is having a operator over in their house and then they are doing the controlling side of it. They're, um, they're vision mixing, all that sort of stuff. And so they'd have a Wirecast or a TriCaster set up or something like that at theirs. And then they're bringing us both of us in as endpoints on bird or cloud say this if this was a regular thing which we were going to do all the time this would be a great way to set it up is, is, is that the right sort of thing yeah no absolutely we we have customers that are actually doing that now so um uh we have people bringing back um uh oh god just trying to think um as a user case uh, we have uh, one um, one part of the world where we have some uh, live comedy that's being done um, yep. as a sort of talking head. So you have a couple of comedians um, that have PTC cameras set up in the house. They are connected to the cloud um, and then they're coming back to the studio. Our mm -hmm. studio has complete control over the PTC cameras, the audio um, and everything. So it, it's mm -hmm. it's a sort of a, a, a sort of a talking head to, um, but without them being in the same room together, bouncing off each other, we can do return feeds. We have audio comms available as well. So the director can talk to the talents in their house. Um, yep. So yeah, that, that's again, that's a fairly simple workflow as well with, with just a couple of people and a couple of cameras. We can do multiple feeds, multiple cameras um, from different locations. And we've had some really interesting inquiries. I think we had one last week for from an orchestra who wanted mm -hmm. to bring in 56 feeds um, for practicing and for then streaming live, which was uh, which was an interesting one to uh, to wow. try and work out 56 uh, cloud feeds coming back to an endpoint. Yeah. Do you think the system would cope with something like that? The system, unfortunately, wouldn't cope. Music's very difficult because of the timing of the low orchestra and the latency. Because with clouds, you have um, you're relying on the public internet, so the latency moves around. Yep. And you know, even even if I was using it, and then somebody three doors down from me was was in the same stream, the latency would be slightly different. So yeah. uh, it was very difficult to do. And in the end, we would sort. Of decided that it wasn't really possible for, for that type of environment where timing was critical. Um, mm. But we are looking at ways of maybe doing that in the future as we move forward with cloud. Mm. Okay. Um, so let's go over a couple more of the specifics, shall we? Yes. So if we jump into this a little bit more, so SRT is the backbone of what we use for cloud. Um, it's a way of transmitting video over, over public internet, um, and pri private and public internet. Um, I mentioned before, it will allow for up to 50 cents of a packet loss while maintaining the streaming quality. Um, we have encryption available. We have different ways of connecting with um, SRT as well. Because uh, mm -hmm. we're talking about I IP um, protocol here. So there are a lot of people that have, um, or particularly larger IT departments that don't like opening ports up within their networks because that then you know leaves them possibly vulnerable for um, cyber hacks and hacking and that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. we have different configurations. Rendezvous is the standard one that relies on port opening, but then we have caller listener, listener caller modes, which make it easier to circumnavigate firewall configurations. So that then works in a similar way to Zoom and Skype calls work. Yeah. Um, and we also have the ability to accept standard SRT sources as an input into cloud as well. So from vMix or from one of the high vision Makito X's or a Makito product as well. So that's really the backbone of the transport um, between cloud endpoints. Okay. 
And so then moving forward within cloud, we have a number of different things that we can actually do. Um, so uh, WebRTC is one that's quite interesting, which is the next slide. So WebRTC is something that's available to any uh, device really that's connected to the internet. Um, so what we can do is we can take um, a feed uh, and we can then publish that as a WebRTC um, so that people can then monitor. So if you had the control room um, in one location, you've got your camera feeds coming in, but the director or um, a producer is somewhere else, they mm -hmm. don't have to dial in fully to the cloud system. You can make the WebRTC stream available to them, which they can then sit and view on an iPad or a laptop mm -hmm. or something that's connected to the, to the internet. Um, and then we have some other options uh, within WebRTC for doing return feeds with, via cameras and different things as well, um, which is, is quite a bit more uh, in depth, but again, people are using um, at the moment. Okay. Uh, if you can, then we have uh, RTMP. Um, so RTMP, um, obviously everybody, I mean, most people probably know about RTMP. It's a way of transmitting um, to various platforms like YouTube, Facebook Live, Wowzer, and other uh, CDNs. So from cloud, we can send RTMP feeds directly out of cloud. So you could be producing your program, recording it locally, sending out a WebRTC feed to embed on a, a website, while sending out also sending out an RTMP feed to your uh, Facebook or your YouTube channel as well. Okay. NDI, obviously NDI is, is, is what we do. Uh, Birdog as a company, we work with whatever the latest version of NDI is. So at the moment we're on NDI 4.5. Um, most people will know, uh, that know us, know that um, our products, our hardware products and cameras are all full NDI and we don't do anything with HX on that side. Cloud, however, will accept any NDI source. So that, that doesn't matter whether it's a full NDI source or an NDI HX source. It could be something coming from VLC player. It could be coming from a TriCast or a vMix system. As long as, long as it's an NDI protocol, um, Cloud will see it and make it available to then be encoded and sent as an SRT feed. What we also have wrapped within that as well um, as part of the NDI protocol is that we're able to send PTZ control, we can do tally, we can do audio, um, we will support full resolution, we can do proxy resolution, um, we can do alpha channel as well. So there's, there's quite a bit um, sort of within NDI that we can actually utilize while we're moving it across the public internet as well. Excellent. And ISO recording, I didn't actually know it could do this. Yes, so recording um, is something that we can do as well. Yeah, no, most people don't actually realize that it is mm. available. So with the ISO recording, there's a couple of things we can do. We can record at either end. So we record at the TX end and at the RX end um, at the same time. And we can either record, record the full NDI signals or we can record the uh, compressed H264, H265 signals. Um, so if you are doing a live and you do drop out like we did earlier, you have a recording of what's going on um, at, either, at either end. Um, you can then obviously come back to that later and re-edit or do something with it. And mm -hmm. um, the person at the receiving end also has the ability to dial in and start using the recorded footage um, as well. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a really powerful uh, sort of tool that's within uh, cloud that uh, that we probably don't make enough uh, noise about because um, everybody thinks the cloud is just a point to point connection. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so that, that's that's really good. Um, and that recording to go onto anything that you want, you just need to, to, to point the recording at a drive or your PC hard drive or a, a disk array somewhere, an SNS system, um, you know. Um, but it, it's got to be a, drive. a local recording, does it? It can't be a cloud recording or anything. It's a local recording, but you can then access it over the cloud as well. Okay. Interesting. And then multiviewer. So yes, multiviewer as well. Um, multiviewer has a couple of um, features to it. So we have two 
versions within multi-view so we have multi-view and lecture modes very very solid very different so multi-view is literally as you would expect from from a standard multi-view we have a number of different layouts so we have an auto grid uh, and we have a, a two plus eight which i think is pretty standard broadcast so mm -hmm. moving into lecture mode uh, multi-view sorry you then just designate the sources that you would like to send as a multi-view um, mm -hmm. The cloud then puts all of those and sends those as a single um, NDI stream. And again, that can go anywhere. And then once you receive it uh, at the other end, that, that can be, again, moved around on your, on your local network. And we have seen people using WebRTC to move the multi-view to producers so they can monitor or yeah. see all of the camera feeds coming in. So, um, yeah, we can have tally borders. We can have source names. We've got audio level meters on there as well. So it's, it's pretty... Pretty uh, powerful tool to have um, and to be yeah, able to use. Really powerful. That that makes the the idea of a producer or a director or something, or even a client, just sitting at home monitoring what's going on, um, so much more powerful. The fact that they can see a multi viewer um, rather than just uh, the actual final program out. Yeah. Uh, so also within the multi-view, we also have something called lecture mode. So lecture mode was designed with um, corporate um, scenarios, uh, schools, colleges, education. Um, it's similar to a multi-view in that you can do split screens. Um, so we have the ability to provide, say, the lecturer who's standing at his lectern, the ability to switch between different NDI feeds from uh, a device, uh, an, an iOS device, could be an iPad um, or, or a laptop that's that's sort of plugged in, so that he can switch between PTZ camera feeds, he can switch between presentations, he can do split screen, he can do full screen. So the sort of thing you would see um, when you when you're pushing um, uh, your lecture up onto uh, a, a number of screens around the auditorium for the uh, students to actually see. Um, so that's that's in, that's. A very nice feature as well again it's not something that people know that we do probably yeah. um and we also within um the lecture mode we have a very sort of basic um user interface that also allows for ptz control as well so not only can he cut between ptz camera feeds he can actually change the presets of the cameras as well so he can he can move those about as well so the idea of using this for then education is something i haven't actually to be honest thought about that's quite interesting um, can you give us a bit of a rundown as to what a sort of educational setup that might be using BirdDog Cloud looks like? It's not something actually that's being used a great deal, uh, particularly in Europe. We have some user mm. cases in the States where it's being utilized because cloud um, doesn't uh, only uh, run on uh, public internet it can work across a local uh, local network as well so it can work in an offline mode if, if uh, that's the best way okay. to describe it um, but I mean NDI as a tool for schools colleges and universities is something that is being looked at um, greatly at the moment uh, we have also developed a, pro a product in conjunction with NEC uh, which is our STM modules which will be utilized in their screens um, to encode and decode um, NDI sources uh, okay. with um, corporate and mainly educational uh, environments, uh, sort of. Okay. So yeah, so it, it's something that we we haven't done, or I haven't done in the UK, but uh, um, it would probably need my colleague Don to talk you through that one. Um, but he's based in the states, so but yeah, it, so it's it, there as a tool. Certainly, an interesting idea. Maybe something we'll expand on more in the future. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, at some point, if anybody would like me to do a, a live demonstration, even a live demonstration on air of actually all clouds connecting and running, mm. then I'd be happy to do that as well. Yeah, that'd be great. So we also have a native NDI encoding available within cloud. Um, so cloud at the moment is designed to run on either Windows or Linux systems, which would be your gateway or your endpoint. So you would need a, a system at either end. That could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, it could be a 19-inch one you rack PC that's running. Um, and within that, we can actually utilize things like the Blackmagic um, capture cards. So you mm -hmm. could take an SDI feed into the capture card and you could do the NDI encoding directly within the computer that's then acting as your cloud endpoint as well 
Amazing. And we could do this. We could do the same at the other end, where we could then have a, a capture device in the PC that they could then decode um, and send the NDI, send it back out to SDI at that point as well. It's a really important step because it, it takes away the need for someone to have an existing NDI set up um, to be able to use a technology like this. You know. Yeah. Um, which is really quite cool. Yeah. And then the, I think the last thing with cloud, the last sort of presentation point here is, uh, which I just mentioned, that we can run in an offline mode as well. So um, once it's configured, you just use um, IP addresses. Um, it's, uh, it allows you to move um, video using cloud um, over a standard uh, WAN and uh, local area network. Um, so anything that's in-house or if you're working between offices that have a, uh, a fiber connection, you don't need to use the internet so you can use it in, in this mode instead. So before we round off, how does the sort of um, the pricing side of, uh, and we won't go into exact numbers on a stream like this, yeah. but um, how, how, do, how does it work? Is it, is it a subscription type thing? Yeah, we have two ways um, that people can purchase and use cloud. Um, we have a the ability to do it or, uh, or sell it on a uh, monthly subscription basis. So anybody yep. that has a production or a use for it for a month or two months can just buy it for a couple of months and use it. Okay. Um, and they can buy then exactly what they want to use. So we have like the recording, the RTMP, the WebRTC, MultiView as options. So if you just want to do a basic point to point connection, then that's all you pay for. If you then want to add in multi-view, then you can add in the multi-view um, module. Um, and then same with the WebRTC, you can then add in that module as well. So it's scalable um, uh, to do whatever you want with it. Um, most of the time we have been selling it to larger companies. So we then sell it on a, uh, a 12 month um, subscription basis. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, it then includes a couple of endpoints plus all of the modules um, as well. But then you can and then add to that as well, because then you can start adding in additional licenses depending on the number of endpoints that you want to, to have available to you to use. Gotcha. So um, cloud is obviously just one part of what Bird Dog does. Let's go over quickly to finish up the presentation on a few of your sure. other products. Yeah, so 4K products um, are uh, what we announced really um, starting last year. Uh, we have a number in the range now. So the P4K was announced at IBC last year. Um, unfortunately, we have suffered some delays bringing it to market due to factory closures and then subsequent um, parts uh, issues following on from the COVID-19 situation. But um, mm. this is uh, probably um, the camera that I get asked most about, about when it's coming out at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, it utilizes a one inch Sony Exmor RC MOS backlit sensor, which is the same sensor that they use in their own BRC X1000. Um, mm -hmm. We have full NDI, we have dual six um, gig um, outputs, we have Genlock, uh, it's a 12 times zoom, it has a Zeiss Vario Sonar T lens on the front. Um, we are able to do 10 bit 422 or 420 NDI as well. So we're the only people uh, from a camera point of view or hardware point of view um, other than new tech themselves that can actually do this at the moment. So that then takes the possibility of these cameras into HDR workflows. Yeah. Um, we've also opened up the entire color management um, back end to customers as well. So you can go in and really fine tune the cameras to get a look that you want. Um, so you have access to the gamma, black levels and all the sort of things you'd be, uh, you'd expect to have access to on a broadcast camera. Yeah, it really seems like some of the image quality ceilings on PTZ cameras are being lifted recently, doesn't it? And this is, this is one of the most exciting ones that's gonna hit the market in terms of just taking maybe an existing PTZ um, production and just improving the image quality from it. I mean, yeah. that one inch Sony sensor is lovely. The one inch Sony sensor is really nice. I mean, the BRC X1000 has been a very popular camera. Um, so we've obviously just taken that sensor and the rest of the imaging module uh, and built it into our camera and then just updated the ins and outs um, and obviously added in full NDI as well. Um, sure. So yeah, it's gonna be an interesting camera. So this is really our flagship camera um, in terms of, of what we have at the moment. 
Um, and then just as, uh, as NAB um, would have been, we uh, announced our slightly lower end camera, the P400. So for mm -hmm. those of you who've seen our P200 camera, it's physically around about the same size. Once again, we're using a Sony um, CMOS sensor, which is the one and two fifth inch sensor. Uh, it's got a 20 times zoom on it, mm -hmm. 4K output, 10 bit 42 420 signal processing as well for NDI. Um, we have NDI, SDI, and HDMI outputs on this as well, all of which can be live at the same time. We have Genlock. Um, and the image quality from this is, um, I've, I've, I've sort of seen some of the preliminary um, images from it, and the, the picture quality is really nice from this as well. Mm. And this camera has the same ability to be able to dial in and uh, access the color management section as well. So really fine tuning the picture again, like the P4K. So controlling these, you've got software, yes. I think you do hardware as well, right? We do, absolutely. We have a PTZ controller um, that will mm -hmm. control all of our uh, cameras. Um, we also, uh, as part of our NAB announcements, released um, some software called uh, Cam Control. Uh, mm -hmm. So this um, is the interface that allows you to access the settings on the camera and basically fine tune all of the color settings. Uh, you have access obviously to things like the iris, um, control movement presets, anything that you would want to do with a PTZ camera can be controlled from our cam control our software. This also has the ability to, um, which is very difficult generally with PTC cameras to actually color match cameras as well. So within this, you set one camera, you can then copy those settings to any of your other cameras that are on the network. So you can color match five or six cameras within a couple of minutes. Excellent. And I guess this brings it back to where it all sort of began for you guys, doesn't it? With a bit of an update to that line. Yeah, so our HD products, the Studio NDI and the Mini have been around for uh, quite some time now. So as obviously the next move, um, we, we, we've got some 4K products. Um, so these have taken a while to come to market. A lot of the features and some of the design we've taken from input from customers, um, which we, we really, really, really appreciate. Our customers um, adding their input uh, so that we can design better products. Um, so within the 4K Pro range, uh, we have three three units. So we have 4K HDMI and a 4K SDI. These these are pretty much the same, apart from obviously the inputs. With the HDMI, we have HDMI in and HDMI out, and an SDI loop, which um, can go to a monitor or it can be a, a real time cross conversion. We have a one gig Ethernet out on these, but we also have a 10 gig um, SFP as well. Obviously with 4K NDI, the one gig connector is absolutely fine because we're only running out at about 340 megabits. So there's plenty of headroom there. But we found that people were um, having the same issues, I suppose, with SDI that you can only run 100 meters before you then need to go into uh, a switch um, or into a matrix or do something with the signal. So for sporting events where you wouldn't necessarily have the ability to run 100 meters and go into a network, um, we, we sort of added in the SFP to these, which gives you the ability to add in a fiber connector, which then allows you to run up to 10 kilometers. So it gives you a huge distance. So the same, same as sitting a uh, fiber back on a, uh, on a, studio camera or uh, an OB camera for, for sporting events, but just doing it with a small box over NDI. Yeah, and for a lot less money as well, I presume. Uh, fiber backs mm. get very expensive. Fiber backs are exceptionally expensive, yeah. Um, the HDMI unit off the top of my head is around about 800 pounds list. Um, mm. And then the SDI unit's a little bit more than that. It's about 950, um, I believe. So pretty well priced what they do. Um, number of additional features over the, the, the original Studio NDI and mini products that we have a, a USB, which will do um, serial PTZ control. We can also do ISO recording from it as well. Um, so yeah, very nice units. Okay, and if you move, interesting. you move down, the next slide is the, uh, the SDI unit, which yep. so it looks exactly the same, um, but uh, it's just the connectors that are different. Um, but within the 4K range, probably the one that I'm asked the most about at the moment is the 4K quad. 
Um, so the 4K quad lists at uh, just under 2,000 US dollars. Um, but what it gives you is four independent 12G SDI inputs or outputs. So effectively with this box, we can do either four encodes or four decodes of 4K60 simultaneously. So does that mean you can bring in four different um, NDI sources through this one box and then the one cable? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we can bring in four independent um, SDI feeds and uh, encode those to NDI simultaneously. At that point, unfortunately, you do need to use the 10 gig SFB because at that point, right. the one gig connect, the one gig network is just isn't um, big enough or man enough for the job. Yep. So that's that's obviously why the uh, that connector is on this unit. Um, we also have an HDMI um, output on here as well. And that can be a multi-view, so you can actually uh, view all of the four inputs coming in, or okay. you can uh, you can choose to monitor individual inputs. The other beauty with this box is as well is that it doesn't just do inputs and outputs. You can designate any of the connectors to do anything that you want. So you could do two in and two out. You could do three in and one out, three out and one in. So you can do any number of uh, encodes and decodes that you want. You just need to tell the unit what you want it to do. Amazing. And how do you control that? That's just done through um, any way with NDI, is it? So we have a web UI. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, it's just a web browser using Chrome. Uh, you just log into the unit into the um, once address. it's on the network. You log into the IP address. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you have access to all of the controls um, for, for the units uh, and then you can then decide what you're doing with it and, and set your settings. So okay. this is uh, this has been very uh, interesting to a lot of broadcasters um, just yeah, because yeah. of what it does in such a small box. Absolutely. I mean, people, if people have already got, say, four cameras uh, using it as an input thing, it means that it brings the cost down and the simplicity down of transitioning those existing SDI, HDMI um, sort of setups over to an NDI world, um, it makes it much simpler. Yeah, and it, as 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 a as a box, um, it's uh, it's smaller smaller. It's about the same size as an iPhone. Um, I suppose is the best way to describe right. it. So it's actually very small as well. So as a throw down box um, to sort of keep in a bag to be mm -hmm. able to do something with or to have on a stage or in an OB truck. It's, it doesn't actually take up much real estate um, and it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Imagine for monitors and things like that, it's brilliant as well um, for, for live productions. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the all of the 4K units um, are uh, also 10-bit, 422, 420 as well. So they again could be used in an HDR workflow. So we're still obviously working on that at the moment, but uh, it could be used uh, as a device by, by a DIT to send images to a monitor somewhere for uh, different parts of a production to, to monitor and to look at. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting product. Excellent. Okay, and the last little bit that we want to talk about, Dante. So yeah, this was this was something that we only announced um, two weeks ago. So we now have uh, Dante um, integration into um, our products um, in a number of different ways. So one of the things we were always asked about was our Comms Pro package. Um, this is great. It's it basically it's almost a free um, talkback um, for a studio. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, using the power of NDI um, within our boxes. But it was limited to having to use a studio NDI, a mini, or a camera. So the, the control, the, the person would be need, need to be connected to the network. Um, so bringing Dante in um, for that into Comms Pro means that any number of different Dante belt pack transmitters can be incorporated into a Comms um, network so that they don't have to be directly connected. Um, they can be a, a roving um, a roving cameraman who's, who's using something or a producer that's running around or just somebody working the, the floor that you need to talk to as well. So that, that works really well, uh, integration into Comms Pro. Uh, okay. Dante Bridge um, allows you to take Dante and change it to NDI to then send it over the, the network with your NDI video. 
and then at the other end you can then turn the NDI audio back into Dante as well um, and that, that's really neat and okay. we also have um, we'll have a software upgrade uh, which is unfortunately chargeable for our hardware that allows the units to be able to uh, take in Dante and move Dante at the same time as the uh, the NDI uh, video signals as well so it's quite a powerful tool. I mean, for those that don't know, Dante is probably the go-to people for um, audio over IP. It's used by over 400 manufacturers as part of their uh, products now. Um, so probably predominantly known more in the AV uh, world, um, mm -hmm. but obviously used um, increasingly anywhere where you're moving video and audio over IP networks now. Excellent. Okay, so that's Bird Dog Cloud. Um, I think we'll get to a couple of questions. Um, Mark has put a really good one. Um, we need you to clarify, Mark, but he's put, um, did you need an extremely fast internet connection to use NDI rather than NDI HX? What internet connection would you say three P200s could go over? Um, Mark, do you mean specifically with Bird Dog Cloud? Or do you just mean NDI in general? Because NDI in general doesn't need an internet connection. If you're just using it on a normal localized network, you could connect a whole bunch of P200s, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you just need the uh, network capacity to connect, but over a sort of a standard one gig network, uh, anything up to around seven or eight P200s running uh, full yeah. NDI. Um, NDIHX um, is a 12 meg long op um, uh, encoding um, format. Uh, for NDI is an iframe 120 meg uh, codec. So they are quite different in the way in which they're actually encoded. And mm -hmm. there is a difference between the latency and then the amount of work that the, the system actually has to do because obviously HX requires more processing power because you're having to do more encoding. So yep. full NDI is slightly better um, from that point of view, but obviously it takes up more bandwidth um, initially because it, it's a bigger signal. Um, so within cloud, um, yeah. cloud doesn't, cloud's very different because you're taking a, an NDI signal from your local network and then you're encoding. So with cloud, we can encode at anything from one megabit to a hundred megabit. So depending on the bandwidth that you have available from your internet connection, um, and what you're doing in terms of work, if it's talking heads, if it's sports or something with fast movements in, will then define what you then encode to. Um, and most people will already have a user case in mind. We have uh, some sports that are running around about 15 megabits, but talking heads, some, some of the guys that are using cloud are only running at five megabits um, on the encoding side. So we ha you have the ability to vary and you can set different parameters within cloud to decrease latency and to give you overhead and to, to manage the signal being moved across. And does that go up um, depending on how many um, NDI sources you're moving from point A to point B or is it the same bandwidth no matter how, whether it's one source or three, five sources? No, it does increase depending on the number of signals that you're sending. Um, so, I mean, these days, most people probably have a pretty decent internet connection where you've got probably 30 or 40 up, 50 or 60 down or something. Um, that's sort of what I get at home at the moment. So sending sources is generally okay because you're compressing down to a reasonable level. The, the one thing that you just need to make sure of um, when you're specking or working with cloud is that your PC, your Windows or your Linux system is um, capable of uh, processing the number of signals that you're sending to it. So mm. that, that's the biggest consideration. And we have some parameters and some guidelines on our website for different systems. Um, and we, we've, we've done systems where people are using um, single machines to take in eight to 12 um, NDI sources. Right. Okay. Wow. Um, so let's talk over some use cases. Um, one thing that's come up for a bunch of our customers recently is the idea of working within a corporate world um, where normally uh, under normal circumstances, someone would um, go around to various corporate productions and produce things for them, you know, stream mm -hmm. a conference. Um, yeah. you could, you could even do it as weddings or something like that, or events, things like that. Um, and you'd be going to that place, setting up for it, streaming out and coming back. One thing that's come up recently is the idea of 
companies that are doing that having a centralized system so say a tricast set up something like that and then using um internet um ip over the internet like Bert or cloud to um provide each of their regular customers with an endpoint and then bringing in so saying logging on to their endpoint endpoint for one day when you've got a stream with them then logging in theirs the next day when you've got a stream with them um, and bringing in each of their clients remotely like that and logging onto them one at a time where, say, there's a permanent install at that client of three PTZs, which are just always there. And then the, um, so would that work perfectly fine on, on Bird or Cloud? Is that something you've dealt with? Yeah, absolutely. It's something that we've done. We have a number of corporate clients where they have different offices and obviously different levels of um, CEOs and managers in different places. Um, we, we've done stuff with Facebook. We were talking with people like Ikea. So some sort of big sort of corporate names that everybody recognizes where they're using um, our cameras and clouds to do exactly that scenario. So taking feeds from different locations, bringing it into one place and then streaming mm. it out to their employees or to produce a video, which then gets shown or is on the company website. Um, so mm. yeah, all kinds of different things that people are doing um, with that type of workflow at the moment what about on the much smaller level so say there's a, a, a job in corporate production company a relatively small level and say they've got um i don't know well pro av as a client and then they've got a couple of other companies as a client and then they've got a stream for for pro av one day stream for them the next day stream for them the next day and then they use bird dog cloud to um essentially log into my NDI setup here. So I wouldn't need mm -hmm. to have a TriCaster. I think that that's something that I could see people um, trying to get up and running. Yeah, absolutely. We Again, we have people doing that as well. So cloud can be installed with your license on any number of machines. Um, mm -hmm. So you could have it running on 30 machines. Uh, but depending on the number of licenses or endpoints and endpoints you have licensed is the number of machines that you can have active at once. So if you oh, are okay. doing various different corporate clients, so you know one day you're doing um, say pro AV, um, mm -hmm. next day you're doing um, bird dog. So you could have the the equipment already installed, but then it only once you connect those two endpoints that they're the only two endpoints that you can connect. So it gives you the ability to, to, to do different productions on different days, um, but have that a bit set up. Within cloud as well, we have something called snapshots. So you can save settings for different shows. So if we work out um, a, a group of settings and encoding parameters for, for you, um, but then we want something different for the bird dog, we just hmm. save those and then we can just recall them. The director can just them recall them time. and it's set up straight away, all the connections, all of the encoding, and it's very simple. And in that sort of an environment, how much tech knowledge or IP knowledge would the actual client have to have if you go there and you install something and then you come back to your your base and how can you turn it on remotely can you set it up remotely for the start of each stream again it's something that we've, we've had a lot because we've got a lot of these being installed into uh, we call them talent or uh, presenters houses who don't yeah. have technical knowledge so the the amount of technical knowledge they have is to turn a camera on and to turn the laptop or the PC or the Nook that you're running the endpoint on. That, that's all they need to do at that point. Once it's turned on, um, you then sitting in your production office can have full control over their endpoint, do all the connections, PTZ control and everything. So yeah, literally all they, all they would have to do is literally just turn the stuff on and yeah. make sure that it's got an internet connection or connected to the internet. Sure. Yeah, and you'd probably have to do a bit of education with them as to internet that could go on in the rest of the building and all that sort of stuff to yeah. to manage bandwidth a little bit. Um, Absolutely. Interesting. Okay, Accessible Glow TV is saying that sound, this sounds amazing. Do you have any demo examples online or anything like that? Do you have any good published um, examples? We we don't at the moment, unfortunately. We have been you, trying right? desperately to get some user cases and some user stories. Unfortunately, some of our larger customers um, haven't been willing to do that mm -hmm. uh, for various it's different trouble. reasons. 
yeah, yeah uh, it's a privacy privacy thing so they, they don't obviously want to tell people what they're doing um how they're doing there is yeah. there is a there is a, a free demo trial version of cloud that can be downloaded okay. from the website which gives mm -hmm. you access to um, all of the modules within cloud except um the web rtc Mm -hmm. uh, the only caveat on that is that it is watermarked because it, it's a it's a demo version, sure. but it will give you the ability to set up a couple of endpoints and be actually able to to play with the system as if you were using it live. Yeah, and test it. whether it's going to do the job for you in the way that you think it's going to be do the job for you. Because I think that that will be something that people will be wondering a lot is, oh, I'm just trying to learn all this for the first time. Is this really going to do what I think it's going to do? Am I understanding this? So downloading the trial will be a great way of of testing all of that out. Um, yeah. Accessible Globe TV is also saying um, it could be used, as I see it, by mainly mobility, many mobility impaired people, as it takes and need the way to run cables, if I'm understanding it correctly. Well, it doesn't necessarily take away the, I suppose NDI does a little bit take away the need to run cables because for each camera, you've only got one ethernet cable and that can be run yeah. through the walls in some offices already is. Um, so rather than having mains power, control cable, and an SDI cable, for example, you just have that one Ethernet cable. Um, so that can help in situations like that and keep the floors clear, for example. But I think yeah. the main way that Bird Dog Cloud could help with that is bringing in people remotely. So save them having to travel from point A to point B into a studio, for example. You could mm -hmm. have a regular production that is run entirely by mobility impaired people where they don't have to travel into a central studio or something like that. They can do it from the comfort of their own homes, which could be quite interesting, especially right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. That would, that would certainly work. And we have, we have, um, people within the medical field using, uh, we're using the products at the moment as well. Obviously okay. at the moment there's, there's a big, there's a big, or has been a big issue between with doctors traveling between say the red zone and the green zone, having to put on PPE to then go into the red zone, which is where the, the, the patients suffering from COVID-19 are, um, mm. to do a diagnosis or to talk to another consultant or a nurse, and then to then come back out, have to then change out all of the PPE, which is then yeah. wasted, thrown away, to then go yeah. back into the, the green zone to treat other patients. So that we've had a few user cases around the world where clouds being utilized over a local network on portable trolleys and uh, connected to cameras to, to sort of bridge that gap so that they don't okay. have to do this continuous crossing over. Um, so yeah, that's, that's quite an interesting. interesting user case. So rather than using it to connect two entirely different locations, you're essentially connecting two wireless kits within the same um, internet connection. That's quite interesting. Yeah, you're just using it as a sort of in its offline mode to collect over the local network that's available mm -hmm. within the facility. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so I think that that's it for the main questions that have come in there. So thank you everyone who's watching, but thank you for that, Phil. I think that was really educational. Um, I think it's a really fantastic technology um, and something we're definitely all going to be um, considering a lot more in the next couple of months, I think. Um, sure, yeah. Yeah, and, and with all of our products as well, we're continuously developing um, cloud. We're, we're working on version two at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So when that comes out for anybody that's already purchased cloud and are using it, that will just be a free upgrade um, as okay. with all of our firmware revisions for our hardware and cameras. Excellent. That's really good to know. So thank you for everyone watching it. Um, if you are thinking of setting anything like this up and um, Either you've got some technical questions you'd like to ask um, for on specifics or you're just really new to all of this and this is a bit overwhelming and you want some help and guidance, please do get in touch with us, with our sales team. We've got a technical support team and we can reach out to people at the manufacturers like Phil to get them involved and to help you guys get set up to take productions into a remote environment over the next couple of months. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time, Phil. I think we'll, we'll try and arrange a couple more of these to talk through various other little bits and bobs to do with NDI and your products and some use cases, for example, could be quite good, couldn't it? Yeah, so, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Thank you for your time and I'll see you all very soon. Cool. Thank you.
XS Wireless Digital is the perfect wireless audio solution for content creators and filmmakers. Thanks to a 2.4 GHz transmission, XS Wireless Digital is a truly plug-and-play system that allows you to upgrade your in-camera audio with one-button operation. With a variety of configurations to choose from, this entry point into the world of wireless will improve your workflow and will expand the possibilities of how you capture audio for your video. For more information, visit Sennheiser.com slash XSWD. The new Super 35 sensor that Canon have introduced with the C300 Mark III is quite a big step up from other S35 sensors that they have created before. From the body and the flexibility that gives us in terms of the expansion packs and the interchangeable mount to the sensor with its increased dynamic range for tackling scenes that possibly we couldn't have tackled or captured faithfully before. I can get more out of this camera. My money goes further. It's as simple as that from a business standpoint. From a creative point of view, it's unquestionably unlocking more creative avenues for us as filmmakers.